Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this is lesson five. Today we're gonna talk about negative exponents, whether they be whole numbers uh, or fractions, and then reciprocals. Um, what we need to know about negative exponents uh, requires us to know about reciprocals first. So any two numbers that uh, are multiplied together uh, or have a product of one are reciprocals. So our first blank, reciprocals. That's your first blank. Uh, two numbers with a product of one are reciprocals. So for example, uh, if we have four multiplied by one quarter, uh, four times one is four, that gets us four over four, that equals one. So then these two numbers are reciprocals. Um, if we have two over three multiplied by three over two, we multiply the top and the bottom. So we get two times three is six, three times two is six, that also equals one. So then these two numbers are reciprocals. Um, what we can say is that when two numbers um, that have exponents and multiply together, um, we add their exponents, right? So when we have um, x n times x to the power of m, we add their exponents together. Uh, if this sums to zero, that means that x is to the power of zero, and x to the power of any number is one. So that would make these two numbers reciprocals. So what we're looking for, when we're looking for a reciprocal of an exponent, is the value that adds them up to zero, um, the n and the m, which would be the negative or the positive value depending on what you have. Um, so since, let's apply that. So we have five to the power of negative two multiplied by five to the power of two. Those equal five to the power of zero which is equal to one. So then these are reciprocals. Um, that would be our blank again. We put reciprocals in there. Um, therefore, five to the power of negative two is equal to one fifth to the power of two or one over 25. Whenever we have a negative exponent, we are going to flip this value because five to the negative two must be the fraction version of five so that it all adds to zero. Let's do some examples. Let's work with it. We have three to the power of negative two given for our first problem. I will go down a little bit. 3 to the power of negative 2 is our first problem. Since we see a negative exponent, um, to work with it, what we need to do is we need to flip over uh, into this number's reciprocal so we can make the exponent positive. Uh, remember, if you do that, you're multiplying essentially by 1 and not changing it at all. So this is the same as 1 over 3 to the power of 2. So I've made the exponent positive, and now that's something that I can work with. I can square both of these numbers, 1 over 9. When it's a negative exponent, there's not much that I can do with it. Um, to, so that I can do something with it, I need to make it positive, and I need to take the value, and I need to take its reciprocal. Okay. So anytime you see a negative exponent, you're going to flip over what you have make it a fraction, and then you're going to make that exponent positive. Let's do some more examples. We have negative 3 over 4 to the power of negative 3. A negative exponent means I need to flip over the fraction. So this is equal to negative 4 over 3 to the power of 3. I can then cube each of these numbers. 4 times 4 is 16 times four is 64, and I need to make that negative, so that's negative 64 over three cubed is 27, uh, and that I believe is the answer, that's as low as we can make that one, negative 64 
over 27. Um, let's see. Our next ones are some try it on your own. So I want you guys to evaluate those two questions. Pause the video and try them. Uh, when you're done, um, unpause and we'll do them together. All right. So we have 7 to the power of negative 2. Start. We got a negative exponent. We're going to flip over the number and make the exponent positive. So that's equal to 1 over 7 to the power of 2. And when I have this exponent on the outside, it applies to both of these values. So then I have 1 is 1 like 1 squared equals 1 and 7 squared is 49 we should have gotten for that one. The next one that we would have tried is 10 divided by 3 to the power of negative 3. Since it's negative, we're going to flip the fraction and make it positive. So it's 3 over 10 to the power of 3. We are going to cube each of these. 3 cubed is 27. 10 cubed is 1,000. And I believe that is as low as it can go. So that is our answer. So whenever you have a negative exponent, you're going to write its reciprocal with a positive exponent. Let's do some more together. We have 8 to the power of negative 2 thirds. Now these ones are fractions um, for their exponents. So there's a little bit extra to do. It just means we have to cube or square root or, or whatever. Uh, as well. So let's do it. We've got 8 to the power of negative 2 thirds. Since it's a negative exponent, the first thing that I'm going to be doing is flipping it over and writing it as a positive exponent. So this is equal to 1 eighth to the power of 2 thirds. One really common mistake is that people also flip over the exponent fraction when that is not what we want to do. We want to leave the exponent fraction the same but just flip it signed. So it flips from negative to positive while the reciprocal is written of the actual value that we are using. So we can now say that this is, says we need to, since the denominator, de denominator is the index, we can cube root each of these and then square it. So this would be the cube root of one divided by the cube root of eight. And then this whole thing would be squared because the numerator is two. Uh, the cube root of 1 is 1, and the cube root of 8 is 2. And again, we need to square it. 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4. So something that looks kind of strange, 8 to the power of negative 2 thirds, is actually just 1 quarter. Um, that's as easy as it gets. Uh, we, do, we go to the next one. Let's go. We've got 9... 16 to the power of negative 3 half. So a negative exponent, we flip what's inside to make the exponent positive. That's 16 over 9 to the power of 3 halves. We are then going to square root each of these numbers because the denominator is 2, and then cube them. So this would be equal to the square root of 16 divided by the square root of 9 all cubed. Uh, the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of 9 is 3, and we're going to cube that again. So we take 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. Oh, we need to cube 9. This is a little bit of a trickier one. Um, let's see. Did I do that right? No, I did not. We don't need to cube 9. The square root of 9 is not 9. The square root of 9 is 3. I'm thinking like, wow, that's a large one. Uh, I need to think for a second. Um, so 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3. That's 27. So that is our answer. That's as low as we can go. Um, there are two more for you to try on your own. Well, they have negative uh, fractional exponents. And um, so you can pause that, and when we come back, uh, you can see if you got them right. Okay, let's do this thing. We've got 16 to the power of negative 5 over 4. 
So we are first thing we're going to do is flip over the number because we have a neg negative exponent. That's 1 over 16 to the power of 5 fourths. We are then going to fourth root each of these numbers and then go to the power of 5 for each of them. So the fourth root of 1 divided by the fourth root of 16, both numbers that I do know, and then all to the power of 5. That would be 1 over 2 to the power of 5. Uh, 1 to the power of 5 is just 1. It's very convenient. But 2 to the power of 5 is 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. So 1 over 32 is our answer for that one. For the next problem, we had 25 over 36 to the power of negative 1 half. Again, because we have a negative exponent, we are going to flip the fraction. So we've got 36 divided by 25 to the power of positive a half this time. We know that a half is actually just square rooting both of these. So this is equal to the root of 36 divided by the root of 25. Two numbers that I'm familiar with, 6 divided by 5. That is our final answer. So we're going to be finding out an answer in a fraction. Uh, sometimes something looks a little bit scary to start off with, but if we just apply our rules step by step, um, it's not too bad overall. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Hope this was helpful, and I'll see you soon.